Hi, I'm John Jowett. Hello, I'm Paul Manel, and I'm back. And he's bad. And you're watching Morrow.com. Um, well, I left, I left IQ uh, 22 years ago, mm -hmm. um, and I obviously went with Tim Esau. I took my, myself and Tim left the band, and we did some writing together, and uh, um, for quite a while, actually, um, and it was good, and then he got married, and kind of things parted, mm -hmm. and uh, I formed another band, and we did, some, did a few little bits and pieces. Um, which I, you know, we've, and I've got some recordings of that as well, which I will be, mm -hmm. they will be available soon, because mm -hmm. I've got all the, we, we recorded all the stuff. So, um, and then I had a family. I, you know, I, I, I grew, I have three boys, so I grew a family. I went away and grew a family. How old are they? Well, they're older now, so 19, 19, three boys, 19, 17, and 12. So they're now saying, Dad, go and, mm -hmm. you go away now and do some more gigs. You go away and do it. <laughs> no, it's it's. I didn't really. I I I, I went away from music for a little while. Uh, never stopped writing, but I didn't want to go on tour, and um, I, I just wanted to sort of relax and and have a have a family life. So I was very young when I was in IQ. You know, I was only twenty two when I joined when I joined IQ, uh, and um, I hadn't done a lot of stuff that I wanted to wanted to do. And, and the, when the band fell apart, I thought, well. I'll keep on with the music, but then I'd, I'd met someone and I thought, well, no, I'd, I'd quite like to have a family and, and not be touring around the whole time. I want to actually be part of the family when they, while they were growing up. So. Like you were known in England as a, as a cult band before I joined the band. And then when, when we first came over to our first ever European concert was in 1986. At the Paradisa Club in Amsterdam, and that was the first time that IQ had ever been abroad. So, uh, I, I mean, IQ in Europe is uh, um, is basically it's my it's my baby, because obviously when Peter Nichols left IQ, I joined, and then things kind of went bang, and we came into Europe. So the Europeans only knew me as the singer for IQ and those two albums, and obviously we did the the Mike and the Mechanic tour on the uh, on the second album, on the I Used to Come From the album. And Soul on You was a, was a radio hit as well, so that was that was good. So when I left, um, I don't think they really knew what to what to do and just to, to continue in Europe. Obviously, they got Peter back in, and he doesn't particularly like playing my songs anyway. So uh, it, it's almost as though um, those two albums didn't exist now, to a certain degree. But a lot of a lot of fans actually came on board at that stage, and, and when and after I left the band, they kind of left as well. But I could get a great following, but they don't play these two albums very much for whatever reason so when I decided to actually thought no I, I actually want to come back into music and do some stuff um, um, it was just a natural thing for me to look at those albums and think well I was really I'm really proud of those albums and I'll get a bunch of musicians together um, to promote my songs you know the Paul Manel new songs etc and then we'll put some IQ songs into the set and see how a new band plays the old you know because it's, it's 20 years later now, so I, I wanted to put a, a, a modern-day slant onto those two albums. And um, obviously the common thread running through it is my voice, and possibly the lyrics as well, because I mean, obviously I wrote all the lyrics for, the, for those two albums. Um, but I think, when we've, because we've, we've done like four concerts now, and more and more people are coming up saying, it's just the way that the IQ album would probably have been had I stayed mm -hmm. you know, with them. And that's true. It is true. That's, that's the way I wanted IQ to to go because that's the way I write songs, and you know. But they wanted to kind of go back to the, I suppose, traditional progressive rock, mm -hmm. which I love. But I also have a, I, I you know, I, I want to get the songs across to as many people as possible, and I don't think it's too bad. I mean, if I write a three or four minute song, I don't think that's a bad thing. I don't think you necessarily have to write a twenty minute song to get your point across. Even though I love playing Wrench. Human Nature, all those kind of stuff, songs, you know, are going to be in my set. And, and obviously, the good thing for me is because IQ are not really doing much of Noms Armo, and they don't do much of I Used to Comfortably, I went to see them actually at Christmas and they played like 30 seconds of Drive On. Mm -hmm. Well, I'll, I'll have those albums. I'll, I'll, I'll sing them, I'll promote them. 
because it's next year, it's, it's 25 years since Nomzamo came out. So I'm going to do it, we're going to do the Nomzamo 25th anniversary tour with this band. I was in a band called Ark who supported yes. IQ uh, back in 1989. Uh, <coughs> the ARU yep. sitting comfortably to it, and uh, we did three shows uh, with IQ. Uh, and it was, for me it was a dream come true because I was a huge IQ fan at the time and meeting the guys and um, so I'm getting a bit of a relationship with people, particularly uh, Anne uh, Fox, my home's sister. Um, going very well, kept in touch and um, came along to um, Paul's farewell gig at the Marquee. So that was the very last time I think I saw That was Paul. the last time, but yeah. And um, people were trying to get him involved in various projects. How do you get hold of Paul Manel? got the faintest idea so we ended up speaking on Facebook um, just completely out of the blue and um, I, I, Paul said he was putting a band together and I said well I'm always available for sessions, bar mitzvahs, weddings and, <laughs> and, up for that. and he said well you've got a band and uh, I because uh, you were in IQ at that I was stage. in IQ, you join IQ? And so I asked everybody in IQ do you have a problem with this and, and you know Frost obviously amongst my many other bands mm -hmm. they were fine about it didn't have a comment back there was a, a problem carried on with that I uh, got together because I didn't realise all this time Paul had been living about 10 miles down the road from where I live <laughs> that was a strange I, thing yeah. was I thought he was in London or Yorkshire where yeah. he was from originally and then he was in the Midlands so it was dead easy we to meet for Pines family got on still and just went from there there's a grain of truth in all I say and do but if it isn't to be uh, Martin isn't playing anymore I mean you well, I've noticed that most people who leave IQ vanish. Uh, like I did. In, indeed. <laughs> From example, <laughs> here. And I mean, I didn't understand it um, before I left IQ, but I do now. It's very hard. I mean, IQ, being on stage with IQ is one of the most magical times I've ever had. Period. <laughs> yeah, um, and uh, you know, um, obviously, there's so much in any relationship, communication, frustration. Be it man and wife, uh, or in a band. Three sides to every story. Oh, <laughs> look at that! <laughs> <laughs> um, so uh, no, uh, uh, Martin um, when he left um, went very much off the radar. We keep, keep in touch, um, but he's not playing to the extent I think he's almost sold his keyboard, which is a shame. He has indeed he's a great, sold his keyboard. Great musician. He has, yeah. I I didn't need to involve Martin Miller because this was my sort of project. So I'd met Ian. I mean, Ian Dimmons is our, key, is our keyboard player, obviously, mm -hmm. and my co-writer. And he was the one really who, I have to say, hand on heart, he probably was the one who said, you should you should do some stuff. I played with someone like you know, I said, you should do this again, Paul. And that's really how it started. So Martin, you know, OK, if, if Martin... So we wrote Still Life, Noms Armo and Promises within probably three, four weeks of me joining the band. Uh, and that's the way he was writing. He was writing more from a commercial, you know, sort of commercial or melodic point of view, which, and that's we interacted very, very well over those two albums, very well together. And I missed, I missed work, working with Martin, because he's a phenomenal, phenomenal musician. If Martin materialised, then uh, you know, I don't think either would, was, would, we'd like to work with him again if he was into it. But he's, he's Martin. He, he fell, he fell out of love with music. He did, didn't he? For you. I'm back with the vengeance. <laughs> Not going to go away. It won't be another twenty odd years before you hear. This is a this is a project that's here to stay, and hopefully this boy's going to be involved with it as well. And it's going to go from strength to strength. And um, please enjoy. Keep listening. Keep watching. And um, pass the word around. Let's make it big. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Great. Very briefly. Then, um, thanks for everything for the last uh, however many years it's been. Good luck to IQ. I'm sure they'll do very very well. Uh, and yeah, enjoy the music. Please check us out, uh, and uh, we may be coming to a town near you soon. So come on. <laughs>